Hey friends, about a month ago I came out with a video which showed you how to set up OBS with Voxango Recorder through a program called JBridge. Unfortunately, JBridge is a paid product, so it'll set you back around $15. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up something called Restream, which is completely free and comes within a plugin bundle called Replugs. Now, before we get into any of the OBS setup, let's start with the basics. The first thing is we need to make sure you have your Realtek audio drivers installed directly from the manufacturer. In order to do that, there's this program called CPU-Z, which I will link in the description. If you go to this page and scroll down, you're gonna wanna click on the button that says zip in English. Once you download that and extract it, you're gonna double click on CPU-Z X64. It'll just take a second to load. You're gonna click on the tab that says main board. Within this section, it'll show you the manufacturer of your motherboard as well as the model number. All you need to do is go into Google and type in your model number and get the audio drivers from your manufacturer's website. Let me show you how to do this using my computer as an example. It looks like the model of my motherboard is X99-A Two. So if we go to Google and type that in, you'll see one of the first links brings us to the ASUS website for this specific motherboard. We went ahead and clicked that link. On pretty much all manufacturers' websites, you're going to see a support button somewhere at the top. For ASUS, it's located towards the right side over here. We're gonna click on support. Then we're gonna click on driver and tools. If we scroll down, it'll tell us, please select an OS. We're going to select Windows 10 64-bit. If you are on a different version of Windows, you're going to need to select a different option here. To check which version of Windows you are actually on, go ahead and click the Start menu at the bottom left, type in PC, right-click on it, go to Properties, and your Windows Edition is most likely going to be at the top of this page here. For me, it says Windows 10 Pro, and the system type in the middle says 64-bit operating system. So if we exit out of this and go back, we're going to select Windows 10 64-bit, and we're going to scroll down to where it says Audio. Although this version is from 2016, this Realtek audio driver should work just fine. Once you have it downloaded, you'll go ahead and extract the zip file, open it up. And for me, all I had to do was click on this ASUS setup. I already have it installed, but I did take a screenshot of what the installation looks like. For Realtek high definition audio drivers, it will usually look something like this. After the installation completes, it will have you restart your computer. Once you restart your computer, I'll show you what to do in the next step. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is install the ASIO driver for your specific audio interface. For me, I have the Scarlett Solo 3rd Gen, which gives me the option to install the software called Focusrite Control 3.6.0. I went ahead and clicked on Download for Windows. I installed it, and now let's proceed to the next step. Next, you'll want to install OBS Studio. The version I am currently running is version 26.1, which was released on December 14th a few weeks ago. So go ahead and download that and install it, and we'll go ahead and jump to the next step. Now we're going to download Replugs, which is a VST bundle from Reaper that they allow you to download for free to use within other DAWs. If you scroll down a little bit towards the middle, you'll see a download link for the 64-bit version of Replugs. The only thing you need to know about the installation of Replugs is that you need to make sure you install it in a directory that OBS can scan for properly. Now, OBS does have the option to add VSTs, which act as filters within the source. And these are the locations OBS scans for when looking for VST plugins. Originally, when I had first installed Replugs, I had installed it into a custom folder that was not located in any of these folders stated here, and OBS could not find any VST plugins I had installed. So make sure when you install Replugs, you allow it to install in these default directories. I believe by default, it installs in this last directory stated here, which is just in the C program files VST plugins directory. Okay, now let's set up our DAW, then our Windows Audio, and then we'll finish it off by setting up our OBS settings. So within your DAW, go ahead and go to the Preferences section. For my audio, I went ahead and selected ASIO and selected Focusrite USB Audio, which are the native drivers associated with this specific interface. Next, we're gonna wanna go to the Plugins tab. 
and just make sure that your custom folder is set to the folder that you installed the replugs bundle into. After that, we're gonna close this, make sure we have our master track selected, go to the plugin section on the left, and drag in the plugin called Restream Standalone directly to our master bus. For this, the identifier is going to communicate the exact name that is written here with the enabled plugin that we're going to set up on OBS. So for example, if I wanted to change this identifier to just something called music, I would need to make sure that when I set up the receive audio option in OBS, the identifier is also labeled music and I will show you that in a second. For the other basic options on this screen, go ahead and make sure the enabled checkbox is checked. And since we are in our DAW, we wanna send our audio out of it. So we're gonna click on send audio at the bottom. And for this dropdown, go ahead and click on local broadcast, which allows us to send the audio out locally within our system. Next, we're gonna set up our Windows audio. So let's go ahead and minimize this. At the bottom right taskbar, you're gonna to wanna to right click on the speakers icon here, open sound settings. And if you don't see sound control panel over here to the right, it's most likely because the window is smaller. So for example, if I make this window a little smaller and scroll down, it's going to be down here towards the bottom. But if this window is already expanded for you, those options are gonna move over to the right side. So sound control panel is gonna be at the top right. Go ahead and click on sound control panel. Within this window, we're gonna click on the recording tab and you should see a device called Stereo Mix. If you don't see this device, it could be possible it is disabled. So right click on the empty space on this window and make sure you have show disabled devices checkmarked as well as show disconnected devices checkmarked. That way you could right click on this device and enable it if it's disabled currently. For me, I already have it enabled, so it shows me the disabled option. But once you enable it, you're gonna right click on it and go into properties. Within properties, we're gonna go to the levels tab. I have my level around 75. Go into the enhancements tab. Make sure you have all sound effects disabled. That way it doesn't interfere with the sound that is coming out of your DAW. And finally, we're gonna click on the advanced tab and go ahead and change the sample rate and bit depth to match what you currently have set up within your DAW and OBS. For me, I selected 48 kilohertz at 24 bit with a two channel stereo output. After that's done, you're gonna go ahead and click OK. Make sure your stereo mix device says ready at the bottom here, and then click OK to exit this window. Now let's set up our OBS settings. First thing I'm gonna do is click on settings, go over to the audio tab on the left and make sure your global audio devices section has everything disabled aside from your mic and desktop audio. For my desktop audio, I have speakers under the Focusrite USB audio device selected. And for my mic, I have the analog inputs one and two selected from my Focusrite audio interface. I also set the sample rate to 48 kilohertz just to keep things consistent throughout my Windows settings, OBS, and my DAW. As a side tip, if we go into the output section, I have my streaming audio track selected to six. And if we go to the recording tab, I have audio tracks one, two, and three selected. This allows me to separate audio into three separate tracks when recording. That way I can manipulate each audio track when creating videos like this. If we also click on the audio tab, I went ahead and changed the audio bit rate to 320 for each of these tracks, and I also labeled them accordingly. Now your DAW audio might not be on track one, but I could show you how to verify that in just a second. We could go ahead and push OK to exit out of this window here. And as you can see, I have three tracks within the OBS scene. I have my mic on the bottom, desktop audio in the middle, and my DAW audio on the top. To set up your DAW within OBS, Go ahead and click on this plus sign down here at the bottom of sources. Click on audio input capture, and you can name this whatever you'd like. For me, I named it DAW RT, which just simply meant DAW Realtek, but you can name yours whatever you like. Once that source opens up, you'll be presented with a device option. You're gonna click that drop down and select the stereo mix device we enabled earlier within the Windows sound control panel. After you have stereo mix selected, you're gonna go ahead and push okay. And now we're gonna set up the portion of replugs within OBS. To do that, click on any of these gear icons here in the middle, select filters, and at the bottom left of this window, you're gonna see a plus sign, and you're gonna select VST 2.x plugin at the bottom. This should give you an option to select any compatible plugin that was installed in the directories we referred to earlier. And as a quick reminder, 
OBS will scan these folders here for any VST2 plugins installed. As a side note, VST1 and 3 are not currently supported at this time, but maybe OBS will come out with an update to allow for VST3 compatibility. If we go back to our window here, we're going to select Restream Standalone from the drop down menu, click on Open Plugin Interface, and it will pop up with a similar window that we saw in our DAW earlier. Similarly, as before, make sure the enabled checkbox is checked. And this time we are going to click on receive audio instead of send audio. The identifier is important. As stated before, this name needs to be the same name that we set up originally when we set up Restream to send the audio out. And just to show you that this will not work, I can play some audio from my DAW right now because within our DAW, the identifier is called music. So once I press play here, you will not be able to hear this. And if I go back to OBS, you will see there is no signal coming from the DAW RT source. But if I open the filter settings again and change this identifier to music instead and close this, we should now be able to hear the audio coming from our DAW. A few more things to note with Restream. You need to make sure that Restream is the last plugin on your master bus. Otherwise, any plugins that are added after Restream will not get transmitted into your DAW. For example, if I drag this utility plugin over to the right of Restream and I tweak the balance to make this completely left, when I press play, OBS will still think this is a complete stereo signal. But if I drag this utility plugin to the left of Restream and press play again, you'll notice OBS recognizes that only the left channel is active. Another thing to note here is that previewing sounds in the browser will not get transmitted through Restream. If I go to the left side and click on samples and click on any of these samples here, you'll notice that when I go through clicking on these items that the utility plugin and the Restream plugin are not getting activated at all. But when I press play on the actual timeline, you can see the green meters going up and down as it detects signal coming from the DAW. I think for the Ableton browser, the reason why this is the case is because when you're previewing sounds through the browser, you probably want those sounds to be unaffected by any plugins on the master chain. So Ableton bypasses those plugins, which allows you to get the actual sound that's coming from each sample you click on in the browser. The last few tips I have for you guys corresponds to the audio settings we set up earlier in OBS. For starters, whenever I add an audio source, I usually bring the fader down at least minus five to 10 dB. For my DAW, I put it around minus 12. And for desktop audio, I put it around minus seven. And just to show you that desktop audio does work, I'll go ahead and click on this little speaker icon at the bottom right. And if you just click on this slider here, you'll see that it makes that Windows notification sound. The next thing we're going to do is click on this gear icon, go into advanced audio properties. And for your microphone, make sure you have the mono checkbox selected. On the right side where it says tracks, this is where we set up the one, two, three, and six tracks earlier. I selected all tracks for number six, and this corresponds to the stream setting that we had selected. And for the record setting, I put each audio source on a separate track, which are tracks one, two, and three. And these are the ones we labeled earlier and set the audio quality to 320. The last thing is gonna be a sync offset for the Restream plugin. It seems the Restream plugin doesn't put the audio completely in sync when transmitting to OBS. So I went ahead and put a sync offset of around 150 milliseconds, which allows the audio to be more in sync between OBS and your DAW. All right, guys. As per usual, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down there and I'll reply as soon as I can. The fastest and best way to get a hold of me is going to be through Discord. I'll go ahead and leave that link in the description below. As I said in my previous video, I'm still working on an M1 Mac Mini versus 2018 Mac Mini comparison. There's a lot of information in that video, so it might take me a little bit to complete, but I should hopefully have that video in the next couple weeks or a month. Until then, hope you guys had a Merry Christmas, and I'll see y'all in the next video.